Hi everyone and welcome to Yugabyte in Action. I am Karthik and I'm going to show you how the Enterprise Edition of Yugabyte works in just about five minutes. Yugabyte is a cloud-native database purpose-built for mission-critical applications. Yugabyte works on any public cloud and on-prem as well, not just on AWS. Let's jump right into how Yugabyte works in an AWS account. The first step is, of course, installing the Enterprise Edition itself, which is really, really easy. Yugaware is the first component we install. It is the control and management software for Yugabyte. It's simple enough that we don't cover it in detail here. The next step is to configure Yugabyte to work with your AWS account. In order to do so, you go to the AWS configuration page, give your account a name, enter the access and secret, and pretty much hit save. Yugabyte does all the other work for you. And finally, you have an AWS account configured. It's as simple as that. The next step is to create a Yugabyte cluster. We also refer to a Yugabyte cluster as a universe. To create a universe, simply hit create, enter the name, provider, and the region that you want it created in, and you'll automatically get a cross AZ install. It also is deeply integrated with AWS, so it can give you an idea of the cost and resources. Hitting create actually starts spinning up the machines. There's a number of subtasks like provisioning, installing the software, and configuring the universe that Yugaware does for you. After a few moments, we find that the universe is created and it leaves an audit trail. Here's the dashboard view. And then we find that there are three nodes that it has provisioned, Yugaware has provisioned, in three different availability zones. There are no metrics because we don't have a workload running yet. All right, that gets us to the next step, running a workload. Yugabyte ships with some sample applications. You can see them right from the UI. So let's try and run the Cassandra key value among the other workloads. So copy the command, go ahead and run it in the Yugaware container, and you're up and running. What you notice now is we're doing about 5,000 read ops per second and 250 write ops per second. Note that these are very light machines. This is neither meant to test performance nor latency, so it's just an example workload. Now let's go take a look at the metrics. If you go ahead and refresh the metrics page, you see that it already shows you some numbers. It takes a little bit to catch up, but pretty soon we have your 5,000 odd reads and 250 odd writes per second. Now the Yugabyte dashboard has a lot of informational graphs and charts, and we expose this using Prometheus. So it's really easy to get an overview of what's going on in the system and to debug. We notice that the workload has settled around 5,000 reads and 250 writes. Okay, let's say you needed twice the read and write IOPS and therefore needed to expand the universe. This is an easy and online operation using Yugaware. To get twice the IOPS, we need to double the universe size. Yugaware is smart enough to distribute the nodes across different availability zones to keep the cross AZ deployment intact. And hitting save gets the operation started. Now, the minute you hit save after making the number of nodes six, it goes into the pending state, and you notice that there are three no new nodes in the three different availability zones. So, this is truly a cross AZ cluster and it's in the to-be-added state. All right, let's go look at the tasks. It sets up a sequence of tasks in order to expand the universe. Provision, install, configure, and finally wait for data migration. Now, while doing the provision, we notice that there is no impact on the workload. It's still doing whatever it was. The next step, installing software, also has no impact on the workload that was running. All right, we just want to show that this is a foreground operation. So now we have reached the step of migrating data, at which point we know that the machines are added and they're running. All right, so what was around five to 6,000 read operations per second and 250 writes drops for a very short period of time. And right after a few seconds, it comes right back up and then starts giving you even more IOPS than it originally did. A quick look at the metrics page shows the same pattern. All right, and the workload keeps going up until we hit our 10,000 read ops per second and about 500 write ops. 
The YugaWare UI now has a success task which contains an audit trail of the fact that we updated the universe successfully. And going to the metrics page, we find a graph of exactly how the IOPS changed with time. And there are our final IOPS, twice the reads with 10,000 ops per second and twice the writes with around 500. The next step is to destroy the universe. So in case you're done running the workload and you want to take down the machines because AWS machines get quite expensive. It's as simple as clicking the delete universe and hitting yes. And it pretty much cleans everything up for you. And that brings us to the end of this simple quick demo.